I have not. Civil? No. Criminal? No. Bench? No. State or federal court? I have not. Have you ever argued a motion in federal court? No. That was, that was Matthew Peterson, y'all. Donald Trump's pick to sit on the U.S. District Court for D.C., revealing his total lack of knowledge of the law during a hearing before the Senate Judiciary Committee last week. Y'all, y'all, that thing's so good. Play it back. Play it back. Just play it back. Have you ever tried a jury trial? I have not. Civil? No. Criminal? No. Bench? No. State or federal court? I have not. Have you ever argued a motion in federal court? Y'all, that thing was so good. Play it back. <laughs> Play it back. Have you ever tried a jury trial? I have not. Civil? No. Criminal? No. Bench? No. State or federal court? I have not. Have you ever argued a motion in federal court? No. If you ever hear any Republican ever talk about somebody not qualified to do a job, Start with him. Y'all, the video of his dismal performance uh, just went viral when he couldn't even ask, ask, answer basic legal questions. It was so embarrassing. The Republican said, uh, can y'all please get this man off our radar? Well, he withdrew his, his nomination uh, because what was the phrase that he used? He said that uh, it was causing a distraction. No, you don't know nothing about the law. <laughs> now, two more Trump nominees are raising eyebrows among Democrats and civil rights groups. According to the Leadership Conference on Civil and Human Rights, nominee Thomas Farr appears to have lied to the committee and failed to disclose his involvement in a 1990 voter suppression effort in North Carolina. Shocker! The group also cites another nominee, Damian Schiff, who they say wrote blogs using a pseudonym with controversial and provocative statements, including calling Supreme Court Justice Anthony Kennedy a, quote, judicial prostitute. In a statement, they write lifetime appointments to the federal courts should only be filled by those who are qualified, will act fairly and impartially, and have a record demonstrating their honesty, integrity, and respect for the rule of law. These judicial nominees should not be confirmed because they clearly do not pass this important test. Now, last week, the White House pulled the nominations of Brett Talley and Jeff Mateer for district court judges after their qualifications were called into question. Revelations came out about their support of some forms of discrimination. Let's go to our panel. Far left, Ray Baker, host of the Public Agenda podcast, Shermichael Singleton, Republican strategist, Tiffany Lofton, union, union and labor organizer, and Linda McAllister, adjunct professor of African American history at LaRoe College. All right, so this is the best y'all can do, Linda and Shermichael. No. Y'all, <laughs> no. I mean, I mean, there's a lot of white guys out there. This, these are the best white guys y'all can find. And, and there are some black guys out there, too, out there that are too, right? that can fill this. But this goes back to what people have been talking about with Donald Trump since 2015. He's not a true conservative. So what are you seeing? You're seeing people that were involved with the campaign or people that have been involved with his array of businesses or family over the last several years now getting these appointments. And what we're finding out is these individuals are either not qualified or B, which is worse, and this is, this is the thing we have to focus on, they have troubling views on the law and on society. And that's what we need to focus on, not necessarily so much the, the lack of qualifications, but if they were to have gotten through the process, how are they going to view things such as police issues with the, the public? How are they going to view civil rights issues? How are they going to view things such as affirmative action when it comes to education? That's the thing that we have to focus on when these type of individuals and nominations come down. Sir Michael, these are some of those idiotic people. One of the guys who Trump's put forth, 36, was only a lawyer for three years. Yeah. Three years. I mean, I think, Roland, it speaks to the process as a whole. I mean, how did these individuals get vetted? I mean, I was briefly a part, and I the know the process how ain't works. the problem. Well, no, it is. Real. It's the I mean, person. It's the person well, the, the picking person them. Well, but but the fact that people like this they have to get vetted. They do background checks on these individuals to see whether or not they think they can withstand a, a vote, if you will. The fact that these individuals were allowed to go through all that process and no one ever said, hmm, I don't think this guy is the best qualified candidate. Hmm, let's do a background check to make sure there's nothing embarrassing here, that would prevent this person from, from passing uh, a vote. Now, I, I, feel you, I feel you, but here's where you're wrong. Ray, 
these guys knew exactly who they were picking. They knew they were picking folks. Really, Chris, you just gonna run the hell across the set like that? <laughs> I mean, I mean, like, like we couldn't see you. Like we, could, like we couldn't see you. All right, uh, Ray, that's, that, that, that's the deal. They knew exactly who they were picking. Right, and some of the things that becomes troubling is that the gentleman that we just saw, Mr. Peterson, was rated as qualified by the American Bar Association for this job. He was rated as qualified. Meanwhile, Mr. Talley was rated as not qualified. So if Mr. Peterson was labeled as qualified, oh, heaven help us. Shoot, what did James Comey find? Oh, lordy, lordy, right? Hoven, heaven help us if we found that there was some instance that this man would have gotten through the nomination process. And to your point, Sir Mike, I think that those that they are vetting, they are not doing any kind of careful oh, consideration, no. any kind of uh, acknowledgement. And what it does is a smack in the face of real conservatives, as Lenny alluded to. Yeah. If there are sincere African American conservatives out there, as they are, and there are folks who believe that there are people who are have conservative viewpoints we need to hold these seats you should put these folks forward but Donald Trump's not that not Donald that. Trump is a joke it's a joke of a politician as such we're getting jokes of nominees Tiffany it's not only in 2015 do we know that he is not a conservative and folks are talking about that we also know that Donald Trump is a full unqualified president and so all he's going to do is do a replication of who he is in appointing and asking for folks to have lifetime sentences to serve this country who are not qualified folks who cannot answer basic questions who only serve three years in law school or have no experience in a courtroom litigating or doing any of that work. And so it's not surprising after we saw Betsy DeVos get appointed to um, Secretary of Education that now we'll continue to see him appoint people who are not qualified, liars, and ignorant to their position and to their job. I'm sorry, I just got to get a little bit more Matthew Peterson. Shelly, go to my iPad. <laughs> Do it again. <laughs> Run that back. Bench. No. State or federal court? I have not. Okay. Have you ever taken a deposition? I was involved in taking depositions when I was associate uh, mm -hmm. at Wiley Ryan when I uh, first came out of law school, um, but that that was. Uh, Have you ever how, how many how many depositions? I would, um, I'd be struggling to, to, to remember. Uh, Le but, less than ten. Yes. Less than five. Probably somewhere okay. in that range. Have you ever tried to, taking a, a deposition by yourself? Uh, I believe no. Okay. Uh, have you ever argued a motion in state court? I have not. Have you ever argued a motion in federal court? No. Okay. Uh, when's the last time you read the federal rules of civil procedure? Uh, the federal rules of civil procedure, um, I have. Uh, in my current position, I obviously don't need to stay as, um, uh, you know, uh, invested in those on a day-to-day -day basis, but I do try to keep up to speed. We do have, uh, at, the, at the Federal Election Commission, roughly 70 attorneys who work under our, our guidance, uh, including a large litigation division. And um, as a commissioner, yeah, we oversee that litigation. We advise them on overall legal strategy, uh, provide... Um, recommendations and edits to briefs and so forth and meet with them about uh, how we're what, going to handle it. If I could ask you this, sure. I'm sorry to interrupt okay. you, but we're only given five minutes for five of you. So. Sure. When, when's the last time you read the federal rules of evidence? The federal rules of evidence all the way through would, um, well, comprehensively would have been in, in law school. Uh, obviously, I have been involved in when I was a, uh, an associate. Um, that was uh, something that we had to stay uh, closely abreast of. And um, there have been some issues dealing with evidentiary issues that sure. will cause me to um, examine those periodically in, in, in our oversight role at the litigation division at the Federal Election Commission. Okay. Um, well, as a trial judge, you're obviously going to have witnesses. Yes. Can you tell me what the uh, Dober standard is? Uh, Senator Kennedy, I, I don't have that uh, readily at, uh, at my disposal, uh, but I would be happy to take a, a closer look at that. Okay. That, that, that is not something that I've had to okay. uh, contend with. Um, do you know what a motion in limine is? Uh, yes, I haven't. Um, I'm, I'm, again, my uh, background is not uh, in litigation as, as uh, when I was replying to uh, Chairman Grassley. Um, I haven't had to, um, again, do a deep dive, and I, under, and I, and I understand, and, and I appreciate this, this line of questioning. I understand 
uh, the challenge that would be ahead of me if I were fortunate enough to become a district court judge. I understand that, um, that the path that many successful district court judges have taken has been a different one than I have taken. Mm -hmm. um, but I, as I mentioned in my earlier answer, I believe that the, the path that I have taken um, to be one who's been in a decision-making role um, on, uh, I would guess now, somewhere between 1,500 and 2,000 enforcement matters, mm -hmm. um, overseeing, I, I don't know how many uh, cases in federal right. court yes, the commission is, has uh, been a party to during my time. Yes, sir. I've, I've read your yeah. your resume. Um, just for the record, do you know what a motion in limine is? I would probably not be able to give you a good definition okay. right here at the, ta at the uh, okay. table. Um, do you know what the uh, younger abstention doctrine is? Uh, yeah, I, I've that? heard of it, but I, again, sure. that, How about the Pullman abstention doctrine? I, I heard You're going to see, you'll all see that a lot in, in federal court. Okay. Um, any of you blog? Okay. No. Any of you ever blogged in support of the Ku Klux Klan? No, Senator. Okay. Let the record reflect everybody said no, Mr. Chairman. The record will show that. Okay, thanks, Shelley. Thank you, gentlemen. I wish we had more time to spend together. <laughs> Senator Durbin. Here's the most important point. The one question he answered probably yes to was this. Will you be loyal to Donald J. Trump? Period. And if that is the only thing that was the criteria for that vetting, that's the problem. And because that's, these, and federal, that's, these federal judges are supposed to be loyal to the law right. and independent of the executive. And when you start blurring those lines and that judicial yeah. cannot keep that executive or the legislative accountable, you start having a breakdown of the American democracy. That's what we should be hearing when we hear this statement. And that's why you see the story where uh, Trump wanted to pull the name of Neil Gorsuch because he wasn't going to be sufficiently loyal to him as a uh, Supreme Court justice. Real quick, Real quick I'll go to my next story. And I think it's very important that the viewers recognize that that was a report. Republican senator who was grilling him. Yes, so that yes. way we cannot make the argument that this is any way partisan, this is any way political. This is a Republican Ray, what did he senator. Say? He said, just because you watch co My Cousin Vinny does not make you qualified to be on the federal bench. And ladies and gentlemen, that's Donald Trump's nominees. Hashtag, we tried to tell you. <laughs> Days on TV One. I will never lie to you. Oh my God. Roland Martin. He doesn't want to talk to us. He wants to ignore us. Uncensored. No. Hell no. no. That ain't gonna cut it, boo. Unapologetic. No, no, that, that is fundamentally false. You are wrong. Unfiltered. He wants an America where we all look alike. He ain't talking about black people. Unrelenting. You better go work out, because you got to fight on your hands. News One Now with Roland Martin, weekdays at 7 a.m. on TV One.